When learning about functions, parameters and arguments tend to be a common source of confusion. So we're going to focus on these two concepts in this video. Parameters allow functions to require additional pieces of information in order to be called. They're a way that the function is able to specify, hey, I need some extra information in order to be useful. Parameters are specified inside of the parentheses of a function definition. You might notice that these parameter declarations look a lot like variable declarations, and that's because they are special variables. You might wonder, why don't they need the let keyword? Well, the programming language is smart enough to know that because you're declaring these as part of a function inside of these parentheses, it would be a lot of extra typing that's unnecessary to have to type let in front of them. But you should think of these as special variables that only exist inside of the function body's block. So the variables x and y are only addressable inside of max's function body. When you declare variables, you're requiring anyone who calls this function to give you these extra pieces of information. The programming language will prevent you from calling a function who declares parameters with any other parameters besides those it specifies. In the function max, you see that we must give it two numbers. And if we look at some examples on how we might call this function, max three comma four would be a valid call of the max function because we are giving the max function two numbers. But two incorrect examples are max three or max three, four, 50. When you call a function, the values that you place inside of the parentheses are called arguments. These are the actual values you're trying to give to the parameters of the function definition. The number of arguments must match the number of parameters in the function definition, as we looked at in the last slide, and the types must also match. So for example, we couldn't call max with two strings like O and no, we would also get an error there. Let's talk about how arguments are passed to parameters, and this process is an important one to understand. When a function is called, the processor is going to drop a bookmark. We're gonna come back here, and then it's gonna go find where is the definition of this function, and try and find a function definition with the same name of the function that you're trying to call. You'll have an error if you try and call a function whose name doesn't exist with a definition. What then happens once we've found the definition is we're going to take the arguments eight and nine and assign those values to the parameters X and Y. And I want you to imagine that these two lines that are written in blue are magically going to appear in your program when the processor reaches this point. This is what we call parameter passing and it's what allows an argument to be passed into the function body's block in order to be used as a local variable inside of that function. Once the parameters are assigned the argument values, the processor is then going to jump to the first statement of the function body's block and continue working from there. These are the fundamentals of arguments and parameters. And so hopefully now you have a good sense of what happens when the processor reaches a function call and that function call contains some arguments. Well, it takes those arguments, assigns them to the function's parameters and then continues into that function definition. And this is how we're able to provide inputs to a function's definition.